This tutorial explains how to match certain character patterns in character strings using the grab and grapple functions in the R programming language. So without too much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this tutorial, I will show you different examples and all of these examples are based on the data object that we can create with line two of the code. So if you run this line of code, you can see at the top right of our studio that a new data object is appearing, which is called X. And we can print this data object to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line three of the code. So after running this line of code, you can see at the bottom that we have created a vector containing four different vector elements. And each of these elements contains a different character string. So let's assume that we want to return the positions of the vector elements that have a match with a certain character pattern. Then we can apply the grab function as you can see in line five of the code. And within the grab function, we need to specify the character pattern for which we want to search. So in this case, I want to search for the character pattern A. And then we also need to specify the name of the data object in which we want to search. So if you run line five of the code, you can see at the bottom that the values two and four are returned. And this is because the second position of our vector object contains the value A and the fourth position of our vector object contains the value A as well. Even though the fourth position is not an exact match, it still contains the letter A. And for that reason, this position is also returned by the grab function. The grapple function can be applied similarly to the grab function. However, the grapple function returns a logical indicator instead of the locations of the matches. So in this case, we have returned the vector object false, true, false, and true. And the value true is returned at the second and at the fourth position, so at the positions where we find a match for the character A. We can also specify multiple patterns within the grab and grapple functions, as you can see in lines nine and 11 of the code. And we can do that by using this or operator. And then we can specify the first pattern in front of the operator and the second pattern at the right side of the operator. So in this case, we want to search in our vector object X, which of the character strings contain either the letter A or the letter C. So if you run line nine of the code, you can see that the values two, three, and four are returned because now the third element of our vector also contains a match to this character pattern. So in this case, to the second character pattern C. Similar to that, we can also apply the grapple function as we already did before. And this time you can see that we have returned a vector of logical indicators, which is telling us that the first element of the vector does not contain one of the patterns, but the remaining elements of our vector contain the pattern A or the pattern C. In the next examples, I also want to show you some related functions to the grab and grapple functions. So in the first example, I want to show you the rec expression function, as you can see in line 13 of the code. And as you can see, we are using basically the same input as in the first examples. So we are searching for the pattern A in the vector object X. And if you apply this function, you can see that a relatively large output is returned. And as you can see, the rec expression function returns different information about our matches. So for instance, it returns a vector with minus one or one, depending if a match was found for an element or not. So in this case, it has returned the value minus one for the first and for the third elements where we did not find a match and the values one for the second and fourth position where we have found a match. And then it also returns other information as you can see at the bottom in the RStudio console. We can also apply the crack expression function as you can see in line 15 to our vector. So if you run this line of code, another output is returned and this output is a list and the list contains a separate output for each element in our vector. So as you already know, our vector contains four different elements. And for that reason, the Greg expression function has returned a list containing four elements. And each of these elements contains different information about the different elements 
of our vector. So one thing that is different in case of the Greg expression function to the other functions is that it can show all the occurrences of a match in a certain element. So for instance, the fourth element contains the letter A twice at the first character position and the last character position. And for that reason, the Greg expression function returns the values one and four. The last function that I want to show you is the rec exec function, as you can see in line 17. So if you apply this function, another output is returned. Once again, this function returns a list where each list element corresponds to one element in our vector. However, this time the output is different. So for instance, the fourth list element contains only the first occurrence of the match in our character string. I recommend to have a closer look at the help documentation of these functions. You can find these functions by specifying question mark and grep within the RStudio console. And if you execute that, you can see at the right side of RStudio that a help documentation is occurring. You can enlarge that and then you can find information about all the different functions that I have explained. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.